And um, once you start measuring things that contribute to operational efficiency, you actually have a path to doing something about it. Um, so I guess the key is a good measuring stick. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's something I should say with respect to uh, demand, which I, I've said a few times over the years, but it sometimes uh, it needs to be said, said again, which is um, the overwhelmingly the uh, there's the, the desire for people to own a Tesla is extremely high. The limiting factor is their ability to pay for a Tesla, not do they want a Tesla. Um, it's, it's easy for people in this room to lose sight of that. It's, if, if your income is far in excess of what a car costs, then you look at value for money, but you do not consider affordability. But for the vast majority of people, it is affordability driven. This is why we cannot simply double the price of the car. Um, or you could say, and think about things in the limit, where if, if you had an you know, uh, infinitely desirable car, but uh, it costs $10 million, uh, it wouldn't matter because people do not, cannot, most people do, do not have that. So demand is very much a function of affordability, not desire. Very important. Um, one of the things we weren't sure about was the price elasticity of demand for, for Teslas. So like, as we lower the price, how much does demand increase? Um, and we found that even small changes in the price have a big effect on demand, very big. So that was a good thing to learn. Um, yeah. And then as aut this autonomy question is, is very, very big. Because um, you could potentially have, I don't know, five times the utility of, of the asset that you currently have. So if passenger car is 10 or 12 hours a week of usage, um, plus a lot of parking expenses, uh, an autonomous car could be 50 to 60 hours a week or something like that. Um, and you could get rid of a lot of parking expenses. So, you know, if, if, this, if this is true, then as autonomy is effectively turned on for, for the fleet, uh, it may be the, it probably will be the biggest uh, asset value increase in history overnight. Emmanuel? Thank you so much, Emmanuel Rosner from uh, Deutsche Bank. Um, so as you uh, start launching this next generation vehicle and ramping up volume, what will be your nearest term priority in terms of segment or vehicles focus? Uh, the, the slide that you showed with two vehicles on the wrap seemed based on form factor, one of them maybe looks like a van, another one looks like maybe like a smaller uh, vehicle, like potentially a Model 2, I guess. What is the nearest term focus for you in terms of uh, ramping up the next-gen vehicle? And how do you make sure that by lowering the price point uh, so much because the cost is going down 50%, you're not cannibalizing demand you know, for your existing vehicles? I mean, demand for our vehicles in terms of desire to own them may as well be infinite. Uh, it's indistinguishable from infinite at this point. Uh, so affordability is what matters. So as you make the car more affordable, uh, we will have demand go crazy, basically. Uh, the, the issue is how do we build the cars? The hard part is building the cars. I can't emphasize that enough. The hard part is building the cars and the entire supply chain that goes with the cars. Uh, this is a logistics challenge of extraordinary difficulty. Um, all the things that have to go into the car have to scale with the car while everything is doing an, an exponential ramp. And if you miss even one of those things, doesn't matter why, earthquake, flood, fire, revolution, I thought I've heard them all. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, any part of that supply chain gets interrupted. You're now, then you have a seizure. The hard part is building the cars by far and the supply chain that goes with it. 